Thanks to science and some pretty simple formulas, we can actually start to determine where we are going to get the best metabolic result with our fasting, with our food intake, and even with our exercise. And I don't just mean simple stuff, I mean like truly being able to determine what our optimal metabolic zone is. Like where I particularly would burn fat might not be the same as where someone else would burn fat or where you would burn fat. And by measuring what is called the glucose ketone index, we can really start to uncover our own bioindividuality and what works for us when it comes for optimal results overall with brain energy and with fat loss. You are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time and a bunch of other videos throughout the week as well, so you're never missing a beat. I need to ask you to hit that little bell button and it's gonna allow you to turn on notifications. That way you know whenever I post a video so the algorithm doesn't make it so you don't see the content, but it's also gonna let you know whenever I go live, which is something you don't wanna miss. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. So what I wanna talk about is something known as the glucose ketone index. And it sounds super complicated, but it's actually like one of the easiest things to calculate. And at the end of this video, I'll explain how you calculate it, but I promise you can do it, it's easy. The GKI is simply your ratio of blood glucose to ketones. And what it does is it gives you sort of a single value for overall what your metabolism is like in terms of how much fat are you using? How much ketones are you truly using? Is it really effective for you? You see, it tracks your metabolic zone. This is really, really important. You see, for example, if we were to test our ketones or test our glucose, it's gonna change consistently. Like, I could test my ketones right now and I show a 1.5 and show that I'm in ketosis. And then I could test it three minutes later and it might show a 0.7. And sometimes people get concerned. They're like, my readings are all over the place. Well, the fact is, our bodies are very dynamic and things are changing all the time. So like, for example, if we go and exercise, when we exercise, our blood glucose is gonna go up. It's a totally normal thing, which means that our ketones could go down. So we have all kinds of things that come into play. If we get stressed out, for instance, our glucose is going to go up. So what we wanna look at is the overall ratio between the glucose and the ketones, because it's that delta between the two that truly tells us overall what our ketone level is like and what our metabolic health is like. This isn't apples to apples, but it's almost like looking at your A1C, which is your long-term glucose value. Like your, if you're diabetic, you measure your A1C. This is the closest we can get to that with ketones. Now, GKI was developed by Dr. Thomas Seafried, and it was basically for brain tumor management. You see, what he knew was that brain tumors were very glycolytic, meaning brain tumors really like carbs. Okay? They're a fermentable fuel source for specific astrocytomas and all kinds of things. So that simply means that when we consume carbohydrates or we have high levels of blood glucose, it could potentially be fueling specific kinds of brain tumors. Now, I promise this video isn't necessarily about cancer or about brain tumors, but we end up using the science that comes from that brain tumor world and from the cancer community to understand how we can optimize our lives overall. So what he found was that this GKI was a great way of determining the overall fermentable fuel and the non-fermentable fuel, glucose versus ketones, without just having to take an instant snapshot like every five seconds to get that result. So he's the one that gave it the term metabolic management because he was looking at it from the side of, this is metabolic management for cancer patients, which brings me into the first study. This first study was published in the Journal of the American College of Nutrition. It took a look at two pediatric patients. Now, before you discount this study because there's only two patients, let me help you understand that when you're doing cancer studies, a lot of times it's difficult to just group them all together. There's different kinds of cancers. So in this particular case, it took one pediatric patient that had a cerebular astrocytoma and another one that had an anaplastic astrocytoma. Two different kinds of brain tumors, but in the grand scheme of things, fairly similar. Okay, so what they had them do is go on a ketogenic diet for eight weeks. So what they found is at the end of eight weeks, they took their glucose ketone index rating from 27.5 all the way down to 0.7 to 1.1. Now, let me make something very clear. You wanna have a low GKI. A low GKI means you have lower glucose and higher ketones. So again, when we look at the overall aggregate, the overall average, it's a nice way to be able to say, okay, here's where I wanna be. My overall delta between glucose and ketones is nice and low, meaning for the most part, over the long haul, I'm predominantly utilizing ketones. They also found within this study that the patient that had the anaplastic astrocytoma ended up having over a 21% reduction in deoxyglucose uptake of the actual tumor. So what that means is the deoxyglucose didn't get into the tumor, wasn't feeding the tumor. 
So therefore, the tumor was essentially starving because this tumor wasn't able to run on ketones. Then when we looked at the cerebellar tumor, there was a 21.8% reduction in that flora deoxyglucose uptake as well. So a huge just reduction overall in both kinds of cancers when it came down to the fuel that actually feeds those cancers, which leads me into another study when we actually look at tumor size. And again, bear with me because this is all going to make sense. We just look at it from the cancer community because it's clear, concrete evidence. This next study was published in the journal Nutrition and Metabolism. Took a look at a 65-year-old female with a geoblastoma multiform, another kind of brain tumor that can be pretty aggressive, pretty volatile type of tumor. So what they found is when this patient went on a strict eight-week ketogenic diet with a mild calorie deficit, she had a pretty significant reduction in her GKI, 37.5 all the way down to 1.4. Huge reduction. Okay, well, here's what's really cool. They found, and of course, this patient was also doing chemotherapy, but they found that when she brought her GKI down low for eight weeks, the tumor disappeared. There was no detectable tumor when the GKI was nice and low, meaning that those ketones were chronically high, in a good way, starving the tumor. 10 weeks after going back on carbohydrates and off the keto protocol, the tumor reappeared. Okay, showing that yes, these tumors definitely feed on glucose, but overall, it's not just the independent spikes of glucose and ketones, it's the overall level. And GKI is how we measure that. So now you're wondering, okay, I don't have a brain tumor, so how is this going to benefit me? It's going to benefit you greatly, because here's why. That GKI gives you a clear picture as to where you are at a given point in time over the longer haul. For example, if you wanted to measure your ketones and your glucose during a workout, you could actually get a broader idea of where you really are rather than just testing your ketones or just your glucose. Let me give you a clear example. Okay, I go into the gym. When I start working out, my glucose level goes up. But as I start to go through my workout and I'm in the gym for a longer period of time, my glucose levels start to stabilize and my ketone levels start to come up. So by measuring my glucose and my ketone levels then and there, I can calculate my GKI, which tells me if I'm actually burning fat. Let me give you another example. If you have two different people, one person, we'll call them person A, likes to do a lot of cardio. And the other person, person B, likes to do a lot of weight training. If they both go into their workout and they're both doing the same diet, they're gonna have different GKIs because person A might end up having a different level of glucose and a different level of ketones than person B. So it's a way for them to determine the bio-individuality, determine, wait a minute, when I'm doing weight training, I seem to have a better GKI. And then the other person might say, well, I have a better GKI when I'm doing cardio. It allows us to get out of this one-size-fits-all approach and truly understand where our ideal metabolic zone is. If our GKI is lower, we know that we're ultimately using more fat. So this is phenomenal if you're trying to burn fat to know what your GKI is. It's really, really cool stuff. And again, when it comes down to fasting, it's the same kind of thing. Normally when we fast, our body likes to use fat as a fuel source, but another thing can happen. When you fast, your blood glucose levels can rise simply because your body kind of panics. It goes into stress, so glucose levels go up. Well, once you get adjusted to a fast, those glucose levels start to come down. So it allows us to know when we start getting optimized during a fast. So if I'm gonna go fast for, let's again, hypothetically say 24 hours, I might find that my GKI doesn't really drop to where I want it until like 18 hours, which means I should probably push my fast a little bit longer so I actually get the benefit. Because if my GKI is staying high all the way up to 18 hours, then I'm really not getting a whole lot of benefit, at least in terms of fat loss, except from a calorie deprivation standpoint. So it's pretty fascinating stuff. Now, of course, you guys know that I'm a big fan of the Keto Mojo meter because it's one of the only meters that can actually measure your glucose and your ketones. So you wanna use something like this. You wanna be using a Keto Mojo meter so that you can actually go to the gym, test your ketones and test your glucose, and then do a really simple calculation. And I'll explain how that calculation works. But for those of you that are watching, there is a special discount that you're not gonna find anywhere else down in the description below for the Keto Mojo meter. Honestly, if you're looking to take fasting to the next level, keto to the next level, and you're really trying to get the most fat loss out of everything, you have to be using this. You can't just use guesswork. If you're trying to just feel good and maybe lose a little bit of weight, sure, you can get by without a meter, but if you're really trying to determine what your GKI is and you're really trying to determine what the best kind of workouts you can do are or what the best period of fasting is for you, you have 
to measure. And honestly, these things are super affordable. The ketone strips are super affordable, way more affordable than any other meter. And honestly, I'm on their advisory board because I like what they do with science. So go ahead and click on the link and take advantage of it and get your hands on one. Okay, now it also can help you when it comes down to your relationship with food. People sometimes get concerned. Like, okay, when I eat this chicken breast, it kicks me out of keto. Well, does it really? Because we have to look at the big picture. If you eat that chicken breast with some coconut oil, there's a good chance that your glucose might go up, but your ketones might go up even more, which means, who knows, your GKI might even be better. You might have a better overall level of ketones in your body by looking at the ratio between your glucose to ketones. So it's very, very, very important because if I eat that chicken breast and my glucose goes up, I might be like, oh no, it's kicking me out of keto, but it's not the case if it's simultaneously making my ketones higher. See what I'm saying? So this is very, very important. Now, how do you actually measure it? Well, this is the cool thing, super, super easy. And I'm sorry that I strung you out throughout the entire video, but it makes sense just to explain things first. All you have to do is measure your blood glucose, then you divide that number by 18, and then you divide that number by your overall ketones. And that's it, that's your GKI. That's why you wanna have it nice and low. Okay, anything below one is considered therapeutic ketosis, like deep, deep, deep ketosis, and I don't expect you to be there. Okay, but you really wanna be in the range of like say one to three. That's a really good number. If your glucose ketone index is above a nine, you're not in ketosis at all. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you're keeping below a nine no matter what. I mean, you might pop in and out here and there, but really you wanna be in that like one to five range. It's like a nice ideal range to be in. Now the only reason that we divide by 18, FYI, is simply because, at least in the Western world, we're looking at glucose as milligrams per deciliter. So all we're doing when we divide that by 18 is we're making equivalent to the metric system, which is gonna be measuring millimoles per liter. If you are already using millimoles per liter, all you literally have to do is divide your glucose by your ketones. The only reason we divide by 18 in the Western world is to get that milligram per deciliter number to a millimole per liter number, which may sound complex, but that's all there is to it. So anyhow, I hope that this helps clear some things up. You should start determining where you are, determining where you're actually burning fat so you can get the most out of things. And please, please, please take advantage of the Keto Mojo meter that you can get a special discount on down in the description below. See you soon.